Hey y'all, Coach and Fire. You got Stacy with me. Shalom, Mama. And in today's class, we're going to be looking at a question from Sion, Song of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. You want to go ahead and read the question? How do we prepare to be chosen to be a part of the bride? And we appreciate the question you guys are asking these days is kind of steering us, you know, into understanding what it is that you guys want to hear about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've gotten over a thousand classes on YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's always good when you guys ask questions. So we appreciate this question. And it's a very important question, a very timely question. Right. Mm -hmm. How to prepare to be chosen to be part of the bride. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at scripture, first of all, to talk about who the bride is. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be looking at the scripture that talks about how we can be part of that bride. Yeah. Not everybody's going to be counted as the bride in this in this time. Right. I think what I like about the question is that he um, asked not just how to be chosen to be part of the bride, but he says... Um, how to prepare, how to get yourself ready to be chosen. Yeah, that's going to be a key part to this video as we get into the Shepherd of Hermes. Shepherd of Hermes is going to be um, the class that talks mostly about the preparation, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's go ahead and get into the scripture that talks about who the bride actually is. So I pulled out a few verses that should paint a picture for us here. Let's start in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. Okay. Verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. Okay. So this is talking about our creator mm -hmm. is our husband. Now let's go down to Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So this verse right here is talking about the church in relationship to the Christ, our Messiah, being the same as the wife is to the husband. Mm -hmm. So this is our first hint, our first big hint that the church is actually the bride of Christ. Mm hmm. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Giving specific instructions to the husbands. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So this sounds like the church is what's being washed by the word. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's read this last verse here. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemishes. So this talking about the church being the bride and how she should be holy without blemish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be important, especially in the preparation, because our father is not really willing to accept anybody as his bride. Mm, okay. Matter of fact, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter 11. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. Now notice this part right here, a chaste virgin. Mm -hmm. right? And it's not talking about sexuality at all. Right. This is talking about our relationship with him. You know, He expects to be our husband and he is the word. It's talking about Christ. Mm -hmm. So for us to fornicate. Or for us to be promiscuous when it comes to our future husband would be for us to entertain other doctrines, mm -hmm. entertain the doctrines of man or the doctrines of devils. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of effort in these last days. Uh, one of our fearless leaders says we're in a fight for the souls of America. Well, it's actually a fight going on for the souls of everybody around the world mm -hmm. as they're trying to lead people away from this bride, no doubt. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of those verses are pointing toward the bride being the church. Right. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of it down here in Revelation chapter 19. Let me start at verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. 
for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. So we understand that the bride is the church. And now here we're at the end. Chapter 19 in the book of Revelation, no doubt, he's talking about how the bride has made herself ready. This would be after all of the apocalyptical events has taken place there in about chapter 16. Okay. So by the time we get to this point, the preparation has already taken place. Okay. Mm -hmm. But let's go on before we jump to another book. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. So here's our first hint as far as what the preparation is all about. It's about the righteousness of the saints. Mm -hmm. Like we said, our father is not really willing to accept any body as his bride. He wants her to be righteous and clean. Right. Because, you know, when you go into, say, a carnal relationship, um, the person that who you are espoused to who will become your wife is a person that you're expected to have a relationship you know your entire time you know here on this earth and so when you go into a relationship with the father this is a relationship where he is espoused to you and so you will be in the spiritual relationship with him um and it has to be one that is righteous, one that is clean, one that is what we would think of as white. He doesn't want us to be defiled by the uncleanliness of this world. Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse 9. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. So there is this marriage supper. This event that we have to look forward to where there's going to be the joining of Christ and the church. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump down to chapter 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. All right, so now up here in 21, we're well past the tribulation in fact now it's talking about this new heaven and this new earth right mm -hmm. and we should note that this is actually not a spiritual thing he's talking about here you know there's a lot of people that want to be confused on what's spiritual and what's material mm -hmm. when they start talking about our messiah coming across the clouds with ten thousand of his saints there's people who tend to want to think that's materialistic like there's actually going to be a chariot going across the sky with angels sitting up there on the clouds. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to this verse right here, they want to think that this one is spiritual when he's saying that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. They've got it backwards. There's actually going to be a physical new heaven and a physical new earth. In other words, the whole planet is going to be rearranged. We're going to have continents where there didn't used to be continents. And some of the continents that we recognize today will be underwater and will be gone away. The earth is going to be completely different. It's going to be a different place. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we look up in the heavens, we're going to see different constellations up there. It's going to be a whole different star pattern up there. That's going to be the new heaven. Right. Mm hmm. Well, in that time, we're also going to get a new Jerusalem like we see there in verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. But notice that this new Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven. Right. It's not have anything to do with that over there in the Middle East, that where the tabernacle or the temple stands now is actually not going to be the new Jerusalem, this Jerusalem or this new temple will be spiritual in nature. Okay. That's what it means that it's coming down from God or coming down from our father. He is the one who is actually going to build this temple. Mm -hmm. and we're going to get into that in a second. But then notice right there where he says that it's prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Right. So this new Jerusalem or this new tabernacle or this new temple is actually going to be the bride. This is our connection point between our next book. But let's read the last verse out of here. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So this new Jerusalem, or like I said, this new tabernacle here is actually going to be the dwelling of our father and man. Okay. This is what the marriage is all about. This is the marriage supper that is talking about here where you have our father and our spirit actually joining together as one, as husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Like you, when, when a man and a woman get married, they, you hear them say that they become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Well, when they go through this marriage supper of the lamb, we will actually become one with our father, just like our Messiah was. Mm -hmm. Back there, what he gave in that speech uh, right after the Feast of Dedication, was him telling us that he and our father was one. Well, that was just another example of what we will go through as we will become one with our father at this marriage supper. And this will be a spiritual thing. And this is definitely going to be a spiritual thing as he comes to dwell with us using our body as his tabernacle. Mm -hmm. This was the plan the whole time. This is why we had to go through different phases, learning cleanliness laws back there in the Old Testament and learning how to love one another in the New Testament and learning spirit to spirit communication in the Third Testament. This is all part of his plan that he builds us up to this point where we can actually be his tabernacle. Right. So but really all we've done here is define who and or what. The bride is right. like I said, we recognize the bride as the church and we see here that the bride will be the tabernacle. Some will call it the third temple mm -hmm. would be another name for the church. But let's jump over into some other books that gives us more details on preparation. Before we go over there, let me speak a little bit about the Codex Sinaiticus. You know what that is? I've never heard of that. The codices are the manuscripts from where our Bibles come from. Okay. It was kind of the original Bibles, so to speak. There are four of them still in existence. The thing about it, our King James Version was written from one of the other codices, like the Codex from the Vatican or Codex Vaticanus, whereas the oldest Codex is the Codex Sinaiticus. Okay. That is the oldest codex that we know about, the oldest one in existence. The thing about that codex, not only did it contain most of the Old Testament and all of the New Testament, but it actually contained two additional books, the letter of Barnabas and the shepherd of Hermas. Wow. In other words, the oldest Bible in the world had two more books in our New Testament. Wow. And since then, since the Catholic Church took over, they actually removed those two books and taken them out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Talking about the letter of Barnabas and the shepherd of Hermas. We don't actually see those in our Bibles these days. Right. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind as we talk about what they actually have in common and this bride of Christ. All right. What we're going to find is that these two books actually tell us what we have to do in order to prepare to be a part of this bride of Christ. In other words, without these books, the Shepherd of Hermas or the Epistle of Barnabas, we wouldn't know what to do. Right. Our father would actually have to give us this information intuitively. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have any books. We wouldn't have it written down anywhere for us. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the Epistle of Barnabas first. Down here where it starts talking about this third temple and what it is that we have to do to become a part of the third temple. Matter of fact, would you start right there where he's telling them how this temple will be built? Um, the Barnabas and the rest of the disciples were asking him, you know, if there will be a third temple and how it would be constructed. And we can hear the answer here. If you start right there. How? Learn as follows. Having received the forgiveness of sins and placed our trust in the name of the Lord, we have become new creatures, formed again from the beginning. Wherefore, in our habitation, God truly dwells in us. How? His word of faith, his calling of promise, the wisdom of the statutes, 
the commands of the doctrine, he himself prophesying in us, he himself dwelling in us, opening to us who were enslaved by death the doors of the temple, that is, the mouth, and by giving us repentance, introduced us into the incorruptible temple. So he's telling us here what it is that we have to do in order to be prepared. Mm -hmm. In order, I mean, this is a major part of the answer to what it takes to prepare. This is not everything, but this is kind of the beginning here mm -hmm. as it's talking about repentance and the forgiveness of sins. Right. Mm -hmm. Because at one point, the majority of us had been defiled. We had become unclean. We had become dirty and unacceptable to be called his bride. Mm -hmm. Well, praise our Father in heaven. We have the opportunity to be forgiven of our sins, right. then we can actually become part of this temple or part of this tabernacle. Right. Mm -hmm. He then who wishes to be saved looks not at to man, but to him who dwells in him and speaketh in him, amazed that never having either heard him utter such words with his mouth, nor himself having ever desired to hear them. This is the spiritual temple built for the Lord. So... The spiritual temple built for the Lord. You notice right here, we started off talking about forgiveness of our sins. Right. Well, this is talking about baptism, mm -hmm. which is how we get the remission of our sins or how we get our sins canceled out. Right. And for many of us, this means that we have to get rebaptized or baptized again because we weren't aware of this the first time. Right. I think of it like a clean outfit, you know, that we were given when we were born. Our outfit was absolutely spotless and clean and was so bright it would hurt your eyes. Mm -hmm. But by the time we were 3 or 4 years old, we had been corrupted by our parents, leading us astray, causing us to do things that would get us cut off from our father. Mm -hmm. And at some point we were told or asked to get baptized again. To clean our suit up again. But they never explained it to us. No, they didn't explain it to me. They just basically told me that because I had taken communion that morning, I had harmed myself and I needed to be baptized immediately. Mm. Yeah, and so they actually called the preacher in, and I may have been baptized the next week. Okay. But it came with no explanation of what actually was going on. Right. So there at the age of 16, my garments had become white again, but I immediately dirtied them up. I had no idea that my garments were white or that I should try to keep them white. And so I immediately jumped right back in the pig pen as soon as the baptism was over. As soon as church was over, I went back to doing all of the things that I had been doing. Yeah, once you got your clean suit on again, you didn't know you weren't supposed to go back outside and start playing in it again. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's... For a lot of us who um, got baptized as children, we um, only got baptized because it was just something our parents explained to us that we, you know, were supposed to do, never giving us an ex explanation as to why we're doing it. And so, like you said, just as you did, we were baptized, but we didn't know why or it didn't even mean anything to us. We were just doing it out of obedience to our parents. Right. And so we dirtied up our outfit. And so now most of us are walking around with stains mm -hmm. and defilements in our clothes and our garments need to be cleaned again. And so now we need to be baptized again. Many of us, most of us need to be baptized again, especially if we've done something to get us cut off, like breaking a Sabbath day mm -hmm. or partaking in one of the pagan festivals or something like that, which would be worshiping other gods, anything like that. And so this is baptism is one of the ways to start preparing um, to become the bride. Well, you see there right after it talks about forgiveness of our sins, it starts talking about the habitation with God. 
there's the marriage right there where it talks about this habitation. Mm -hmm. But we have to get our garments clean first. We have to clean ourselves up before he will be willing to habitate with us. Mm -hmm. So is this sort of like when the Messiah um, went and got baptized by John um, and the Holy Spirit came down? Um, is this sort of like when him and the Father were united you know into marriage as one that would have been our messiah's marriage supper mm -hmm. that's when he he himself went through it like mm -hmm. you said he was baptized first and then they saw the spirit descend upon him mm -hmm. well this is what's going to happen to all of us at one point when we get the forgiveness of our sins and some of these other things that it talks about here his word of faith his calling of promise, the wisdom of the statutes, the commands of the doctrine, he himself prophesying in this. So we got all of this to go through, but mm -hmm. we understand that it starts with the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we to get this doctrine or these commands or these statutes, of course, that would be the covenant, mm -hmm. which is Exodus chapter 20, the book of Exodus. Uh, four chapters, chapter 20, chapter 21, chapter 22, and chapter 23 makes up the book of the covenant. That's where we find out about the commands, the statutes, and the judgments, even the prophecy of the spirit mm -hmm. that will come, the, that angel that's supposed to dwell with us. This is how we initiate, how we initiate this preparation for us to become the bride. Right. Of course, we have to wait for that particular ceremony to take place, but we don't want to wait until then. We want to be prepared now right? because it's not something that we can do overnight. It's mm -hmm. not a quick process. This preparation is not a quick process, mm -hmm. you know, to learn the commandments, to learn the wisdom of the statutes actually takes time. But I stress it because of its importance that it starts with our baptism or starts with our rebaptism, right? Which makes our bodies a habitable temple, a a a tabernacle to where he can come to dwell in. Well, let's get into the Shepherd of Hermes and let's hear a little bit more about this tabernacle or this temple. And the Shepherd of Hermes is called the Tower, right? Right. And in this book, we're not going to cover all of it. Of course, we can't because it's a pretty long book. But throughout the Shepherd of Hermes, it tells us how this temple will be constructed. Mm -hmm. This is actually the only book that tells us how the temple will be built. And of course, Barnabas told us what we have to do to make ourselves a part of this temple. But the Shepherd of Hermes actually gets into the construction of it, how it's built. It gets into the nitty gritty of it when in one translation, you can actually hear them actually building it in the background. Yeah, it's just so, you know, the coincidence that these are the two books that were, along with others, left out of the King James. Well, when we think about the Codex Sinaiticus, no, these were the only two. Hmm. The only two that they took out of the New Testament was the Epistle of Barnabas, and which we just talked about, and the Shepherd of Hermes. Right. And these are the two books, like we said, that tell us about this temple, how to get in, and how it is constructed, how it is built. I think it's not a coincidence at all that they actually took these books out. They hid these books from us. You see this book here in the fourth chapter of the Shepherd of Hermes, the one that's talking about the tribulation, you see the church is actually described as a bride mm -hmm. or it's talking about how she's coming forth from a bridal chamber. Mm -hmm. In this part of the book, what we read is that after the tribulation, Hermes is shown a vision of the tribulation. And then after that tribulation is over, then we see this virgin 
arrayed in marriage garments. Right. She's dressed all in white like she's going to a marriage. Well, that's similar to what we read over in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. How after the tribulation was over, did this new Jerusalem come down mm -hmm. adorned like a bride? Mm -hmm. This is giving us the timing mm -hmm. of when the marriage supper will actually take place. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if these um, events happen... Or when these events happened in this order, you definitely have to be prepared before um, you go into the tribulation. Because trying to get prepared during the tribulation is just not going to work. So the way that I'm understanding that these events happen is um, you're prepared. You go in through the tribulation and then after the tribulation comes, you come out and then this is when... Um, the marriage supper actually happens. Right. In this section here, in Similitude 8, which is all about the rods, the angel of the Lord gave instructions that nobody is to escape. Nobody is to go without their rod being examined or, you know, a rod being uh, correct both of, before they're allowed to go into the temple. But he said right here, what he said, Take heed lest any escape thee, he said. Still, if any escape, or meaning if anybody gets by, he's going to test them at the altar. Right. So the tribulation, like you said, is not the time to learn or get prepared because that's actually going to be a trial. That's when we're going to mm -hmm. get tested. Mm -hmm. So if you've not prepared ahead of time, it's going to tell on us mm -hmm. during the tribulation. Mm hmm so if you definitely think you're going to just sneak in, um, it's not going to happen. No, he actually has angelic guards preventing that, stopping anybody from getting in. There will be nobody a part of this tabernacle, nobody a part of this tower that's not actually prepared. Mm -hmm. And that's why we wanted to bring this book to your attention. If you haven't heard it all about it already, is because, like we said, this book tells us how this temple will be built. It talks about us as these stones here coming from these 12 different mountains and how these stones will be fitted or not fitted if they're not acceptable. Mm -hmm. How and who would actually be allowed into the temple and who won't. Right. Mm -hmm. It gives it in the form of a parable, like you said, and speaks about each of us individually as these stones each of us has a different type of stone each of us is a different type of stone and some of our stones most of our stones will have to be cleaned up right you see there where it says some of them are black as soot some of them were bare some of them without vegetation some of us are thorny some of us are mm -hmm. full of briars different thing these have a uh, different meaning mm -hmm. and the book explains what all of these mean what they actually mean to be withered and you know without water and or scorched or rugged or something like that the all of this is explained in this book letting us know that we have to be straightened out like for instance this one it talks about clefts here you remember what the stone is with the clefts i do not if I don't have my paper here with me, I do not. Right. We're asked to read this book often so that, you know, we can um, almost memorize this because mm -hmm. it's so important. I think clefts are the ones who still have um, things against each other, if I'm not mistaken. Right. It says right there, um, drop down a little bit, it says... These are they that have art against one another and from their backbitings, they have withered in the faith. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, there's 12 different stones. Um, this is just one of them, but it's an example of what's going to be unacceptable. So those that those of us that are backbiting or those of us that have art against one another, have mm -hmm. problems with each other, we're going to have to learn to fix that. That's part of preparing to be the bride of the 
of Christ, right? Absolutely. This is the main thing that we have to do to prepare mm-hmm. because we, we learned back before that each of these mountains, mm-hmm. they all were believers. Every one of these mountains, even the moth-eating ones, which were those who was flat out blaspheming the Father. Yeah, I think one of the things that, you know, we was listening to this um, recently and one of the things that stuck out to me was it kept saying these are the believers these are the believers yep. these are the believers and i'm like oh okay so these people though they had these terrible faults they were yet believers yeah and so being a believer is not enough mm-hmm. you know just believing in christ is not going to get us there because we have other things that are going on you know some of us are doubtful that was one of the big ones being doubtful of what this scripture called double-minded Mm-hmm. is going to be one of the things that prevents us from going in. Mm-hmm. Being selfish, being um, holding grudges against one another. There are many flaws that we have that have to be corrected if we ever expect to be part of this tower. If we expect it to be part of the temple, mm-hmm. we have to get rid of these flaws and this book. I'm advising you guys to go read it, but you could also listen to it, too. There's some people that, you know, don't read well or don't read it all or read too slow. Or, you know, you can hear audio versions even on YouTube that are pretty good that you can actually listen to. And you and I, Stacey and I have done a verse by verse class covering every verse out of this book in a playlist. Yeah, I would definitely say that you believe, as well as I do too, that The Shepherd of Hermes is definitely still one of the best books for this time that we're in now. Because it's how, it's what we need to prepare. Mm-hmm. Like, if we don't have this information, if somehow we're still holding grudges or, or, or still have these flaws or still hard learners or, you know, Whatever the flaws is, it's covered in here. If Mm -hmm. we are still doing this, we're not going to be allowed into the tower. We're not going to be allowed into the temple. We're not going to be a part of this bride. Mm -hmm. We, and then it talks about how those people will get recycled, even going on into a lesser place. If we don't get into this, to this tower here, that's being built. So you guys check out the shepherd of Hermes. I'll give you our playlist. Of the classes that Stacy and I did, like I said, it's verse by verse for every verse in this entire book. So it's a pretty long playlist. But at the end of it, you'll understand what it takes to be prepared mm-hmm. and what it's going to take. And what it's going to take is that our so- our stones have to be cleaned up. Some of us are white and round. Mm-hmm. It goes into a lot of detail on who we are and, you know, what's going on. And why our stones are unacceptable. So we may end up doing another video on this. Getting more into the details of these stones again. But in the meantime, you guys go ahead and check out those other classes. And check out the audio to the whole book. Mm -hmm. But before you go, please leave us a comment. Hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. And with that, we're going to say Shalawama.